all right welcome to the channel let's get started on our barn painting today i have liquid white this is this is the sky it's a big sky clear down to here this is this is the big boy canvas today this is an 18 by 24 that's what i call it my big boy canvas i do 16 by 20s a lot i mean i i used to do these all the time but i've kind of toned it down a little bit <laughs> i'm using pure white right here to start with this is going to be a nice bright sky going to have lots of yellows ochres and browns and i got a picture up here i'm looking at i seen this picture the other day and i thought whoa this is a nice sky in this picture problem with using pure white is i can't really see where i'm putting it but that's okay that's okay for now i'm, I'm putting this in with a one inch brush because i want different kinds of collars mixed in here you'll see what i mean as i get going But liquid white is, in case you don't know, it's the same thing as liquid clear. And what it does, you put it when you put it on your canvas, it helps your collars blend together. And they refer to it as a wet on wet. If I had this whole painting with liquid white and liquid clear, it'd be a wet on wet. But the whole painting is not. But that's what they, this is Indian yellow, by the way. When they say wet on wet paintings, that's what they're using. They're using liquid white or liquid clear. It's the same thing. One's white and one's clear. It's the only difference. This is Indian yellow. Man, I really like Indian yellow. It's a, it's a real nice color. I, I don't use it much. Uh, just in paintings like this where there's a lot of yellow. But it's a nice color, I gotta say. Sometimes referred to as the sunshine color. And then I'll take a two inch brush and I'll mix every bit of this up. But I want to put certain collars in certain areas, and that's why I'm kind of using a one-inch brush. That's the way I like to do it anyway. I like to use a two-inch brush to me is awful big. I mean, people use them all the time, and it's fine. Everybody's different. I just think it's kind of big to be using to, if you want collars in certain areas, I use it to blend with mainly. Because I just think it's a real big brush to be starting starting out a sky with in my opinion and therefore i don't use it much when i'm starting my skies let's use some cad yellow light now this is a different color see it's different looking we want different types of yellows in here different types let me want some of this up in here let's hit some yellow ochre this will, this will make it look a little different on it. Yellow ochre, let's throw some up in here. Down to here. Yellow ochre. Yeah, I want a nice streaked up sky with lots of yellow. Different shades of yellow. I'll even throw some brown in here in just a minute. Let's get back into some cad yellow light for this area down in here. There's going to be a big tree right here. But I still want some collar in here. You can't just leave it blank. Let's hit some burnt umber, which is brown. For those of you that do not know, it is brown. They call it burnt umber. I don't know why they just can't call it brown. Make things so much easier, wouldn't it? I want this kind of dark. I want this corner dark. And I'll bring some darkness on down through here, make it a little darker. See, we blend this all up. It should come out pretty nice. I've got my collars about where I want them. This has actually got a tree here, so this is really brown, literally, anyway. Uh, let's look around. Let's see, maybe a streak here. Streak there. Uh, 
Looking around for more. Okay, let's take a two inch brush. So happens I got one sitting right here ready to go. Make sure it's clean. We're gonna start here in our white. Do the lighter colors first to work our way outward. This will all blend. I hope I can see my lines of this barn here when I'm when all this is said and done. I do crisscross strokes just like so. so this is that's very light right there, and that's that's really the effect I'm wanting. Do your lighter colors first and work outward. Oh, look at all that yellow and different colors in there. I like it. And we're going to start here and start going up. I think I might have a tree here too. But I found that crisscross strokes seem to do the best when you're wanting stuff to blend real nice. I'll occasionally wipe my brush off. I would like it a little, a little darker right here. Let's do some raw on there. Now I wouldn't normally do this, but I want it darker. Oh wow, yeah, that's darker, and that's okay. That's what I'm wanting. This is raw umber. It is definitely darker than burn umber, isn't it? Okay. Now we got some a different color for sure. Let me go ahead and work before I get into that raw umber. Let me make sure everything's blended down to here. And I'm wiping this off, wiping off my brush as I'm going. Because I'm picking up a lot of dark colors and I don't want it to put it back in here. Well, I, I think I like it. Stand back and take a look at it here. Let me make sure. Okay. All right, I went ahead and outlined my barn here. And now we're going to start throwing some color in. Let me see what I got here. I'm just making some kind of a gray. I'm not sure what it is. I'm just taking some thalo blue, some black, and I got a pile of, pile of white that I've had sitting here for a day or two. It's just got a bunch of different colors mixed in it. I'll throw a little brown in there too. And it's just a mix of colors. I mean, that's really what it amounts to. Yeah, this is darker. It's a little bit of brown helped. And we're just throwing collar down. I'm just, I think I'm gonna make this blue today because I did a red barn a couple paintings ago. And just to make it different, that's what we're doing. Thalo blue, black, white, touch of brown. I'm just mixing it right on the spot. This is just our base coat. I mean, you can mix it right here on the, right here if you want. I'll take a little crimson throw in there. See? Why not? The more colors, the better. You can just mix it right on the spot if you'd like. I do that a lot. Let's take some brown through in here. Take some of our collar we had previously mixed. Throw in here. I want it. I want this to be blue today, though. But it don't hurt to use different collars. The more collars, the better. In almost all cases. Brown, throw some more brown in here. Uh, the sun is obviously coming from back here today, so we know where the sun's coming from, or the most of the light, I should say, not sunlight. 
I have a bad habit of calling everything the sun, but it's light. Black, phthalo blue, brown, just mix it all up. Like I said, I got a picture that I have up here. It's mainly of the sky and the shape of this barn. The barn does not look like this. Really, I just used it for the sky and the shape, and that's it. Everything else, we're kind of winging it. That's the way I like to do it, <laughs> preferably. Uh, do I really like to do it that way? I'm not sure, but that's how I usually do, wind up doing it. Um, for the roof, I should throw in some brown, burnt sienna, which is a good, pretty good color for a roof. Throw in some white. And as I said, all we're doing now is putting collar on the canvas. And I'm going to continue this off camera. You guys see what I'm doing. This is all I'm doing. This is save time. I'm just putting collar down. And we'll be back and we'll do something with this bottom part. All right, let's go ahead and throw some grass in down here. It's important to get this done today. This is probably all I'm going to be able to do today on this one. But let's get our grass thrown in here. And I'm going to do the same way I always do. I'm going to start with cad yellow light. Let's see the shade according to the sun. Probably this will probably be lighter than this. This should be dark area down in here. So actually I'm going to make a mark right here. This will be our grass. I'm just going to take some collar and I'm going to throw it in here. I'm going to take some ochre and then we're going to mix it all up with a one inch brush. Take some ochre. This is just our foundation right here. Our base, base collars. Take some green. Take some green in. This is going to be a little road right here. Go ahead and throw some green in. Let me go ahead and grab some ochre. Let's go ahead and throw some ochre in here. This is going to be darker than that. So let's make it a little darker than that. Some green. This this should be bushes right in here. So I'm not real worried about this particular spot. But I'll bring the grass on up a little higher there. Um, right down in here, green, let's do some Prussian blue in. It's getting darker as it comes towards you. That gives the appearance of distance. As it comes towards you, it gets darker. Prussian blue right in here. Probably going to be dark right in here, here, dark here for sure. There's a tree there. Let's throw some crimson in. I, like, I really like using crimson in the foreground. Lizard and crimson. It's a reddish color. Red in the foreground to me looks fine. It's a foreground color anyway, in case I didn't say that just now. I get to painting and talking at the same time, and I can't tell what I've already said. So let's take us a one inch brush. Okay, let's begin mixing this up. We're just going to blend this together. And hold my painting still, hold my easel still. And as I said, all we're doing is putting color on the canvas. This is not by no means the finished product, by no means. Start in your yellow and work your way down. Stay out of the blue for as long as you possibly can. And we're probably to that point now just about. There's not a lot of grass in here today. Let me go ahead and finish this little bit of green and yellow here. But you gotta have color on the canvas before you go any further.
Just scrub it in. Scrub it on in the best you can. Pretty good to me. Let's go ahead, since I got this out, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some raw umber right in here and just darken this up. Gotta have something here. Just darken it. Okay. Now let's do our road. We're gonna do it kind of the same way. I'm just gonna take varied collars. This brush had Prussian blue on it, so I'm going to take some Prussian blue, clean my brush by just wiping it on the canvas. That's how I always clean them. I'm kidding. <laughs> just trying to get some of that stuff off of there. Uh, let's get some ochre. I'm just trying not to dirty up a bunch of brushes. And the same principle, this is just a base coat. This really don't mean nothing, but you got to have collar down. Let me use some brown so if I can get some of this blue out of my brush. Brown's a little stronger than ochre. Throw some real umber in here. And a lot of times I'll wipe all this back off with the shop towel. Reason is that way I can paint on it quicker. It dries quicker and therefore I can paint on it a little bit quicker. Of course I'm not going to paint any more tonight until tomorrow but it's okay, this is a pretty good start we got here today. Just getting color down really is really beneficial. Just getting some color on the canvas. And after I'm done doing this, I'll look at my road, make sure it's proportional. Well, it may not be, I don't know, I'm doing this pretty quick. But I'll adjust it and make it proportional. I probably will wipe this road off because these collars, using this dirty brush really didn't help this road any, but and that's okay because I'm just wanting something down. Don't bother me at all. Especially if you know you're going to wipe it off, right? And I am. Oh, burnt sienna. What am I thinking? I have burnt sienna in here. Looks better already just with that little bit of burnt sienna. I like burnt sienna. Such a nice color. Raw umber right here. It'll be dark right here for sure. Just get here at the bottom. Best you can. Yeah, I'll take a shop towel here in just a second. I'm gonna wipe every bit of this off. As soon as I get it about the way I want it, about the shape I want it. Okay, folks, this is all I'm gonna do today, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, we're back. I actually, I made this barn a little taller. I brought it down a little bit more. Probably um, half inch. All the way across made the roof a little bit longer i would actually like it a little bit bigger than that but yeah i think i might leave it let's go ahead and you know we might leave it because it's okay i mean if it bothered me that bad i would change it it don't bother me that bad but uh, i did bring it down a little bit more so let's go ahead we're going to put a couple trees in here these trees are really big i gotta say they actually come all the way off the canvas because i'm looking at a picture right here and I'm not sure I want mine to do that. Cause man, that's, that's pretty big. And as I said, a picture is an idea. You don't have to follow it exactly. If you don't, if you see something that you don't maybe like, don't put it in. You don't have to follow it exactly. Just use it as a reference. Um, this is raw umber that I'm using. Now, having said that, I, by the time I get this tree done, this is a very wide tree. There's a couple of them right here. They're right side by side. 
So this is really dark back in here in this area here. It's either trees or a bunch of leaves. I really can't tell to be quite honest. It looks like two trees side by side to me according to the picture and that's what we're going to do. We're going to put them real close together, even closer than this. May even touch, I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell what's going on with this picture. It's, it's just really dark. The scene is back, back in this area. I'm going to put some stuff right in here. Just a really dark picture. This is all actually black according to the picture. Okay, let me get another brush and we'll put some limbs on. I'm going to use raw umber. These limbs, some of these limbs come all the way over. All the way over. I'm just going to throw some in here real quick. They get a little shorter as they come up. We'll work on these here in a minute. I'm just placing them in quickly. I got a smaller brush for some smaller limbs here in a minute. I said I wasn't going to bring this all the way to the top of the picture, but I did anyway, didn't I? That's what I said, you know, as you're going along, you just have to feel, feel your way through. As I looked at it, I thought, oh, man, that's too big. But, you know, that's how it wound up being anyway. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Let's bring one kind of up right here. Let me change brushes real quick. Get a smaller one. Get a smaller brush. These are for the smaller limbs. These are going to have leaves all over them, so we don't have to. They don't have to be perfect branches. Actually, I might make these these a little bigger. There's lots of leaves on this tree, and it's actually a pretty dark tree. There's not going to be. It's going to be dark. I usually put highlights on them. But this tree looks dark. I might put a little small highlight. We'll see. I changed my mind a lot. We'll see what happens. Okay, let me uh, let me get me a figure out what I'm going to do here, and I'll bring you back in a second. As soon as I do, I I don't know what I'm going to do yet with some of this with this collar in the darkness. All right, folks. I made a boo boo. I was trying to follow the picture, put the leaves where I want them. Use a, I use using a different collar today than I normally do, and I really messed up. I hated it. <laughs> well, I disliked it. Hate's a strong word. I won't say hate. I really disliked it. So I wiped this off, and now I got a real mess on my hands. And now I've got to figure out a way to fix it. And this is the next day, so I've had all night to think about it. I believe I'm. You know, I believe I'm going to have to use a one-inch brush on this because this is this is ruined. This sky here is just completely ruined. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a monstrous tree right here, and I want to try to cover up some of this disaster that I did here. And we're going to we're just going to take it from there. We're going to work with it. I mean, this is what you got to do if you want to save your painting. You just have to figure out a way to fix it. And hopefully, if you wasn't actually watching this video and you just looked at the painting, you would not notice anything. That's the object of it. You wouldn't think anything's odd or different, or you just want to make it so it looks normal and natural. These, I'm going to go to the store and get me some new brushes. These brushes I got are pretty much shot. I have to do that on occasion, probably. I'd say probably once to every two months, maybe, or maybe a little less. I have to go buy all new, not all new brushes, but my brushes that are worn out. I, I use round brushes a lot. 
this is raw umber I'm using right here. I'm just putting in a new tree. I'll probably put, I'm going to probably finish these limbs off camera to save time and then I'll bring you back and show you what we're going to do with the leaves. Because, yeah, we got to have a new plan now. This changes everything. Let me finish putting these branches in, finish this tree out, and I'll bring you back. All right, we're back. Now, I put this tree in, and I put a few highlights on it. This may turn out okay because this, this stuff behind here almost looks like background stuff, which would be perfect. So I'm going to start with some black. I just need to basically cover up a lot of these edges. Let me get some more. My black's a little stiff this afternoon. Let's see what we can do with this stuff here. This is a real mess. I really boo-booed on this one, but this is this is a good lesson trying to save a painting. This is part of painting is trying to save one. I'll show you these mistakes, man. I mean, everybody makes them. Just because you don't see them on YouTube don't mean they're not making mistakes. Everybody does. Do I feel bad about it? Yes. But you know what? It's a good lesson. This is a good, good tutorial for this kind of stuff. Simply because it happens to everybody. But the thing is, you got to be able to know how to fit, or at least try to fix it the best you can. Can you always fix it? No, I've I got plenty of paintings where I, I just I lost it. I mean, I just couldn't fix it. I mean, I, and the main problem I have is I've wasted time on it when that happens, because you know time's precious. <laughs> Not only have I wasted time, I've wasted a canvas and I've wasted all kinds of stuff. But you know that's just how it is. I mean, we're all human. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. So you get to see one of my mistakes today. And um, let me look around here a minute. See this, so you can see through these, this through this tree, and really that looks fine. Even this tree right here looks fine. It looks like background stuff. So that's that's terrific. Now, let's take some, let's get us a mid-tone. I'm gonna try to use the same brush if I can. Get rid of some of these paper towels. I'm trying to wipe some of this black off. I'm going to use Sap Green Cad Yellow Light. Probably more yellow than green because I got black on my brush. Let's just go around and see what this is going to. It don't look too bad. We're just trying. I'm just trying to highlight. I kind of want it dark along this edge here. Just this is some casual highlights for now. Just to put some collar in it. We don't want the collar to be crazy or nothing. Just a little bit on this edge, just a little, not much. Because I don't want that kind of dark. Okay, it looks alright. But yeah, you gotta you gotta figure out how to fix these things. I've fixed many of them. Some paintings I've let them sit around for weeks until I can figure it out. Because you gotta think. And as I said, there's sometimes I, they just they're just lost. I just can't do nothing with them. And I hate when that happens, but you know what? It does. <laughs> there's just nothing you can do about it. Okay, I had to pause there for a second, get me some clean, get me some more cad yellow light. I wouldn't mind to have these edges pretty bright right here because of the sky. And after that, we're going to tone it down just a touch. That's probably not bad. I mean, we're probably just going to leave that just the way it is right there. Maybe just a spot here or there. Well, what I'm doing now is I worked on the roof a little bit. I just put more collar on it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll do more to it here in a minute. Now I'm working on the barn. 
Got some phthalo blue, some black, a little bit of white. Remember, the sun, this is the dark side of the barn. Usually I have light hitting it, but the light is back here today. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to, I'm gonna mix another thing, put another uh, layer of collar on here. This will not be our final layer. We'll do one more where I'll put the boards on and stuff. But um, I'm just randomly grabbing collars. Here's some Elizabeth Crimson. Throw in a little bit of white just to mix things up. Just to put varied collars, that's what we like to do. Thalo blue, black, a little bit of white, maybe a touch of brown. That actually looks better with a touch of brown in it. And that's real, this is really all I'm doing right now. This is I'm just putting another layer of collar. It's, it's layering. You know, when you paint, it's about layering a lot of times. Most of the time, it is. That is what it is. it's about, it's layering. This was our first layer, getting collar on the canvas. Now I'm working on the second one. And then I'll do one more. The last one may not be as intense as this one, because I'm gonna put boards on it and I'll just look around and just see what I have and see where some stuff needs to go. But this layer here is kind of important. They're all pretty important, really. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish, what your, what your mission is, so to speak. Okay, I'll do a little bit more, then I'll finish some of this off camera. Let's see, there's a divide here where this roof where this barn meets this building so I'll make it a I'll put some kind of a collar transition right there yeah and this is really it just throw throw another collar down here but yeah this is going to be kind of a dark darker barn than what I would normally paint I usually like the sun to kiss part of the barn that way I can use light and shadows to my advantage but there's the only shadow is going to be here is going to be in front of the barn probably right through here and this will be lighter than this that might be the only shadow on here today maybe you know as the painting goes along I change my mind a lot gotta be flexible okay I'm just gonna keep doing that for a while tell you what let's go ahead and do Let's go ahead. I'm working on the barn here a little bit. I'm not finished, obviously. But I put a row of background trees in. Let's go ahead and get our grass out of the way because I'm going to get it on the barn. So let's go ahead and do some grass. I can touch up the grass later because I know I'll, I'll need to. But let's start with some cad yellow light. It's got a little green mixed in it. And this is a really big brush. So I'm not sure why I chose a brush so big, but I did. It's okay. But that'll help us cover some more ground quickly. See, if you get up in, in here a little bit, you actually create a little dark area for a shadow. Not a super dark area, but just get up in here a little bit and it'll touch these trees that I just put in and create a shadow. Let me see if I can get next to this barn without getting too much on here. I'm going to, but <laughs> that's why I wanted to go ahead and do this now just to get it over with. But yeah, just push up on your brush. That's why I go through brushes so much. It tears them up to do that, but you know, it's a tool. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? I start mixing in a little yellow ochre. Start mixing in some ochre with our stuff. Just keep coming down. Yellow ochre, catch yellow light. We don't want too much texture in it yet. I want to try to keep it as soft as I can until I get a little closer. I start throwing in some sap green. And 
and I'm going to get it on this road, and that's what I want to get and just get this over with. Because it's going to get all over everything, and that's okay. That's just how it works. More sap green. And I've got a shadow. Let's see, pro it's probably going to be, I'm going to say right in here. This will be lighter than this. Still using sap green. I need to darken it a touch. Let's put some Prussian blue in it. It's coming closer, therefore it should start getting darker. So I'm kind of flipping up on the brush here to to help it out, give it a little texture. I'm going to take some lizard and crimson and throw it in here too. Crimson, Prussian blue. We'll make it really dark down in here. Darker than what it is, if we can. And I'm sure we can if we try hard enough. Prussian blue. Lizard and crimson. messing with it until you get it the way you want it. That's typically what I tell everybody, including myself. See, that looks pretty good there. Now this is going to be a little darker over here. I'll do probably this right here and then I'll do the rest off camera. For one reason, I'm running out of paint. <laughs> Don't get no better of a reason than that, does it? Yeah, I'm just throwing throw some of this in here real quick cover up that line we made well I started working on my road here a little bit um, this is gonna be grass right here I'll have to modify it a little bit we're just getting started all we have is collar down at the moment but you gotta get started on it <laughs> sooner or later you gotta do it so I'm just, this is, um, like I said, I'll have to modify this and move my grass around a little bit and this, that, and the other. But I like to make, make it look like there's tracks right here. So you kind of got to dip it down a little bit. This side over here is going to be lighter than this because the sun is coming toward us. Uh, let's get some white, some yellow ochre. I don't know, we're just gonna, and I'll have to redo these too, but I'll put them in just so I kind of know where I'm at. It helps me kind of figure out what I'm gonna do in here. This is yellow ochre with some white. And I'm just going along this edge. This will be the bright edge of this dirt road. Now let's work on the dark edge, which would be right along in here. And I'm kind of I'm trying to go and try to blend things together as I'm going along. This grass is wet. We just put it in. Like I said, I'll have to go over this again more than likely. But that's okay because you got you just got to get started on it. You got to get started somewhere. That's what we're doing. We're getting started somewhere. This is kind of a see. I'm picking up a lot of that stuff there. That's okay as long as I don't get a whole bunch of it. Let's take a little raw umber. Raw umber, it'd be good along this edge right here. But everything's pretty wet as you can see, so it's going to give us a problem. Now you can always wait, but I'm impatient. I'm just trying to get as much done as I can to be honest with you. 
Trying to get as much of this done today as I possibly can. And you got to play in the wet paint sometimes. <laughs> if that's what you want to do, you got to play in the wet paint. See how I'm stroking this though? I'm just. Ch -ch -ch -ch. This is what I'm trying to accomplish right there. See, something like that. I'll go over this grass because see this grass is kind of straight. We don't want a straight line. All right, I went ahead and put a tree in over here. Now let's put some leaves on it. I think it needed a tree there. Black raw umber, touch of Prussian blue. Oh heck, let's just start right here. Let's put our darks in first. This is going to be a comma struck tree, unlike that one. That's used with the one inch brush. This one is a comma struck because it's pretty close up. I want to put our darks in first. I went ahead and ran some kind of some kind of highlights down it here, some quick ones. Raw umber and black. This tree's very wet. I just put it in, and we're just going to use our imagination, figure out where we want stuff. And literally, it's a comma stroke. That's literally the motion that you're making. Just whoosh, whoosh. I do both ways. I do it that way, then I'll come back and flip it that way sometimes. Just whatever you're comfortable with. It don't make no difference, really. If you see any bad spots, cover them up. This is your chance. This is your chance to fix any boo-boos. Put a little more black in that. A little too much Prussian blue showing through. Now I'm in here in the grass and this is really wet too. Alright, let's hit the top area here. This is probably going to be good for base color or darks. Just keep it going. You'll get it. I know it feels like a lot, but it's not that bad once you get used to it. Just like anything else, you got to get used to it. I thought it was terrible when I first started doing comma strokes. I thought, my gosh, so much easier to use the one, and one, inch, one inch brush, and it is easier. But you don't want to do that all the time. Especially with the close up tree in particular. Let's throw some leaves up in here. Stand back and kind of take a look at it here. Probably need stuff right in here. Okay. Hmm. That's probably okay. Alright, I went ahead and threw my mid-tone on here, which was sap green and yellow. Now let's go ahead and do some highlights on this thing. I'm going to use pure cad yellow light. It might have a little green in it because I got green in my palette here. And you know the light, this is the, where the light's coming from. So we're going to, this, this is actually kind of greenish, but we're going to highlight these edges the best that we can. Yeah, this definitely has some green in it for sure. Well, we're just going to hit these outer edges. You may not be able to see too big of a difference today because it's got green in it, and that's okay. I mean, it looks fine. 
And I'm gonna keep wiping my brush off, of course, cause it's gonna pick up all kinds of stuff that we don't want on it. This area here's really wet. I may have to hit this again later, as in tomorrow, this area here. If I can't get it the way I want it. Cause it's really wet, it's got wet grass under it. Oh, uh, let's go, let's just put something right in here. The best that we can. I'm holding my brush sideways so I can pick up some paint off the side of it. Let's throw a little something in this area. Stand back and take a look. And see what's going on up in here. Now this shows up pretty well right there. Got that brown background up here in the top top of the sky. Well, it shows up too good, don't it? And just go around just wherever you think spots might need a hit. Because the sun will touch other leaves. It's not just going to be the ones in the front. It's going to be other spots that it's going to catch some sun. As I said, I'm using a side of my brush to get some paint off of it. Let's see right here. Okay, let's try to throw some stuff right in here. Just some patches of yellow here and there. Stand back and look. I think maybe right in here I might have some stuff. Might have a little something there, maybe a little something here. You know, these are just leaves. The more color variation, the better. 